I'd like to welcome you to the fourth annual Hadoop Summit. We have over 1,600 people. Look around. It's a huge crowd here. Um, folks representing over 400 companies, 12 countries, and a myriad of industries. So it's, it's a huge, broad participation we have an interest in, in Hadoop this year. Um, we have a fantastic show for you today. We have a bunch of interesting keynotes, and then we're going to follow that with three tracks covering a lot of detail on Hadoop technology and its use, which is something people asked for last year, really wanted to drill down into the technology, and that's what we're going to do today. So I think you'll find it very satisfying. What I'd like to do in the next few minutes is talk about um, what we've seen happening in the Hadoop world over the past year. I'm going to talk about how we use Hadoop at Yahoo and why Hadoop is so important to Yahoo and how we run our business. So let's get going. So where are we? It's been only a year since the last Hadoop Summit, but it's been quite a year, right? Everywhere we look, we see innovation happening. It seems every day there's another Hadoop-related project coming out as another company making an announcement around Hadoop. And with each announcement, we're getting rapt attention by the media, and for good reason, right? That's good for the community, and it's good for all the work that the folks here are doing. Right? And if you look at adoption overall, um, and I'm just putting some badges up here from the beginning, it's no longer just a West Coast early adopter phenomenon. What's been happening year over year over year is more and more companies are getting in the game. More and more companies are getting interested in Hadoop, and more and more companies are investing in it. And I just put a bunch of badges here to give you a sense of the progression, but if I wanted to, I could fill up page after page. Just, just the number of companies represented in this room would fill up page after page of companies interested in this technology. Okay? But the big news is, and I, I said mainstream, Hadoop isn't quite mainstream, but it's almost mainstream, right? And we're seeing it, we're seeing it being rolled out across many verticals, government, infrastructure, web, finance. And we've heard at least from one major company claiming that half of the global 500 customers that they have are either using or interested in using Hadoop. And it makes sense, right? Because typically the way this type of technology works is Departments pick them up, right? Very often, advanced development groups or groups with a specialized need. So in the case of Hadoop, maybe a BI analytics insights team of some sort. Companies gain practice on it. They get comfortable with the technology. Technology evolves a little bit. It starts moving from department to department to department until one day it pops and it gets on a corporate buy list and, and enterprise-level purchases start happening. We're not quite at that point, but we're getting to that point, and that's a big deal. Right? Um, and lastly, the reason I put mainstream on the slide is you don't get more mainstream than Jeopardy. You know, and folks here know that Hadoop was one of the key technologies that IBM used in Watson in the man versus machine bake-off, where Watson trounced the human contestant in Jeopardy. That was watched worldwide, and Hadoop was a major engine that made that happen. So that is very mainstream. But the big thing we're seeing happening is, and you've seen this, big data is just like a hot topic. It seems like every day you hear about big data, right? Um, there's aggressive commercialization happening around big data, and for good reason. Companies are realizing that they have massive amounts of data that they've frankly been leaving on the floor. Data that hasn't fit into their traditional structured database systems that they have running in their companies, and data that they know that if they can extract value out of, they can differentiate their business. So they're really interested. And the companies that are in the business of supplying solutions, whether hardware or software, to those, to those enterprises are getting in the act, right? Um, and we're seeing that by um, a number of major companies who are getting into the game. For example, we've recently seen announcements from EMC, from IBM, from Informatica, right? They're hearing from their customers the demand. The customers are asking, what are you doing about um, big data? What are you doing about semi-structured, unstructured data? How does Hadoop fit into your portfolio? How does it fit into your tools? How does it fit into your data systems? How does it fit into your storage systems? You know, do you have an answer for this? And these companies are smelling the money, and they're getting into the act. And that's when you can see that, that, that it's just so hot, and there's just so much going on. We've seen um, major events get sold out on Hadoop and on big data. Look at this event. But also GigaOM's structured data event last week sold out. Their last event on big data sold out, right? And we're seeing a lot of articles 
come out in mainstream magazines. There was a great article, I think it was probably about a year ago at this point, in The Economist on Big Data, incredible article. We've seen articles in Fortune. We've seen articles in Times. We've seen articles across the board on this topic as people realize the value that they're getting out of big data and the value that they're getting out of, out of uh, Hadoop. And it's just, it's just a rapidly growing ecosystem. So as I mentioned before, barely a week goes by when there isn't an announcement of, of, of some type. And in fact, there's a number of announcements that are being made here today at this conference on this topic. But one of the things that's really showing the expansion in the ecosystem around Hadoop is the differentiation. Companies are coming out and specializing in different parts of the ecosystem. So we have companies that are specializing in infrastructure, such as Cloudera, Datastax, MapR, Tools, Datamare, Karmasphere, right? Applications, companies like Dapper, which I'll mention a little bit later, and Palantir. And we're just finding companies all over the world are interested, and, comp and, and a lot of players are finding niches that they think are interesting to make a market out of and to really make a difference. Right? But we are seeing innovation happening everywhere. Um, and you know, I mentioned Dapper before. So Dapper is a company that was acquired by Yahoo that does what we call smart ads. And what they do is they use Hadoop to build models to personalize their ad creatives. Right? So that's a, a very interesting, innovative application use. But what I'm finding at Yahoo is a lot of, um, a lot of uses of the technology that would not be top of mind. So for just a quick example. Recently, we realized we needed to retile and rebuild all our maps um, across the world, right? Normally, it takes us some months to actually retile. There are tens of millions of tiles, and there's a lot of analysis that has to go on to retile maps. And it takes about six weeks to retile um, maps for the US. So what we did this time was we used Hadoop, and we were able to complete the complete retiling of the US um, in five days, which is an 800% improvement. Just sort of a side project, just one example of hundreds that we have going on Yahoo, but it's innovative. Okay, so why do I care? So I run the cloud platform group at Yahoo. So we provide the core infrastructure and the core platform technologies that power our businesses worldwide. And Hadoop is a key component of the Yahoo cloud architecture, and it's a key piece of technology that we use to run our company, and for good reason. Because Hadoop is one, of the, is one of the key technologies that helps make us the premier digital media company. And from a tech point of view, being the premier digital media company is all about what you do with digital assets. It's all what you do with data. It's how you get data. It's how you process data and transform it into value, Hadoop. And it's how you serve data and make data available to applications. It's all about that. And Hadoop is about big data. And Yahoo has tons of big data. We're probably one of the largest private clouds in the world. We have over 200 petabytes of data under management. We have, we, we, we have over 100 billion events, billions of page views. We have hundreds of web properties and experiences across the world. And we have a massive business in a number of different categories, such as search, communications, media, and advertising. And one of the things that's kind of technically interesting is a lot of the requirements that we have to serve those different products are different. So a lot of the use that we place and a lot of the demands we place on Hadoop technology varies. So not only is it big, but it's variable. And we, use, and we, and we actually apply this technology in each niche to create a level of differentiation. And in the middle of it is Hadoop. Because Hadoop is what makes Yahoo personal and relevant. Right? And I'm going to run through some examples to just give you an idea of how we use Hadoop. And there are many, many more. But let me just run through some just to give you a sense of the diversity. If you take our home page, um, Hadoop makes it personally relevant. We have something called the Today module, which you may have heard of, the area in the middle. And what we do is we, use a, we, we have a series of algorithms we call Core, which is Content Optimization Relevance Engine that runs on Hadoop that allows us to personalize the home page. And every day, we personalize 13 million different versions of the Yahoo homepage. And as a result, we're able to increase our click-through rate on the home page by 270%. So what's happening is we're actually changing what content people see. We're making it more interesting. And as a result, they're clicking through because it's personalized, right? Major, major benefit of Hadoop. Mail. We use Hadoop for both account fraud detection as well as anti-spam. And we have one of the best anti-spam technologies that exists in the industry. Search. 
We use Hadoop to differentiate ourselves in search beyond the 10 blue links in quite a number of ways, but just kind of two quick examples. We serve structured data. We're able to actually link a bunch of structured data that is relevant to user search queries and make that available so that they have a richer experience. We even use Hadoop in our search assist technology. This is when you type stuff in and you get keywords, right? Where we're able to compute a complete repository of search assist definitions in 30 minutes using Hadoop. Local. Geotagging data, right? Taking a bunch of uh, uh, text content, text content, geotagging, understanding what the location relevance of a piece of data is, and then serving it in the right context. Display, of course, all uh, not just ad targeting, which we use Hadoop for, obviously, but also to actually predict um, demand in our marketplace, understanding supply, and and, and improving the uh, efficiency of our display marketplace. News and across all media, we use Hadoop to aggregate and categorize content of various sorts. But one of the interesting things is that we can link different types of data. So for example, we could take news articles, link them to images, link that to videos, determine relevance on what to serve, and make that available to consumers to create a much more engaging and interesting experience. They have a bunch of videos, a bunch of images, and a bunch of text. We could do that not just for the head, because today that's done generally by editors for the head, but we could do it all the way through to the tail and make this just an incredibly relevant and powerful solution for Yahoo using Hadoop. Right? And then finally, mobile and connected devices, where we use Hadoop to understand what type of content would fit into a display form factor for uh, consumers based on the kind of device they have, as well as understanding intent, what they want to do with content, and changing the kind of content understanding the intent people have because they have a device that's on the go. So here's just a, a few examples, but the list goes on and on in terms of the diversity of, of uses we have with this technology as it integrates with what we do. Okay, so let me just give you a little bit of background on the overall project. It started, we started developing Hadoop about five years ago as a research project. And we started with a small team. And we've had a consistent development effort that's been growing and growing over the years ever since. Um, it progressed. It started as a research project early 2006, 2007. And it progressed to um, an applied science project where we worked on, we used Hadoop on our advertising and our search projects overall. Um, we went into production around advertising and content optimization. That today module thing is one example of that. Um, and then we got to behind every click. And what I mean by behind every click is we started capturing every event happening on the Yahoo network, taking all our user data, understanding what they're doing, and using Hadoop to capture it, pipeline it, scrub the data, make that data available to our applications, as you saw in the examples before, but also for just kind of classic anal data analysis to understand what's going on behind our business. And now we're focused on what I'm calling knowledge of the service, which is really the secret sauce. This is where we take all of Yahoo's content, and we, and we integrate it with the rest of our technology, and we derive the kinds of values that I gave you in all those examples um, earlier. Um, so basically, we integrate Hadoop into our overall architecture, and we use it to massive scale. And I just have some numbers up there. 42,000 servers today, 5 million, over 5 million monthly jobs, so just a massive scale. So let me just um, give you a, a quick picture of the Yahoo overall cloud architecture. So this is kind of a classic uh, cloud architecture of some sort. The bottom two layers are the layers that people typically call cloud or think of as cloud. The bottom infrastructure as a service, where we have virtualization of things like network and hardware and that kind of thing. And platform as a service, where we're dealing with um, storage, compute, which is Hadoop, and serving, caching, that class of technology, um, programmable layer of technology that we make available. And what we do is we take that classic cloud, specifically the platform as a service, the, you know, the compute piece and, and storage in that, and we use that to serve the knowledge of the service layer. And again, this is the area that I call secret sauce. This is where we take all the data assets, and we drive all the algorithms, and we use this entire series of technology to differentiate ourselves and personalize um, our experiences that we have across everything Yahoo does and across our entire business. So that's how it fits into the whole story. And this is great for Yahoo, but we think this is also good for the industry, right? Because we've had 
we've shared a lot of the innovations that we've had, and we've been a major contributor to open source, and we're a major believer in open source. Right? We, we contribute back the work that we've done in Hadoop, but also in many other areas, and we participate in several other projects, such as YUI, Uzi, Zookeeper, Traffic Server, and the list goes on. Because so we believe in the power of community. We believe in, in leveraging and sharing our knowledge to differentiate ourselves um, as a company by having all the great minds and other companies bring their innovations in where we're interested in contributing and we're also interested in taking. So for example, we run um, Hive and HBase at Yahoo, which were created by other companies, and we share ours back, and that's the way the community works. So it's, it's, really, it's really been a great experience and something that we're very deeply committed to. So the question is, what's next? Yesterday, we announced that Yahoo, together with Benchmark Capital, are forming a new company, or have formed a new company called Hortonworks. And Hortonworks is dedicated to the adoption and maturation of Hadoop, Apache, open source Hadoop technology. Right? That's the focus of this company. Um, and we're seeding the company with key architects from Yahoo and core committers of the Hadoop project. These are the people who have committed the bulk of the code to um, Hadoop projects so far, in, seeded into this company. And the idea is that this company and Yahoo will continue to develop around Apache Hadoop, and they'll continue to, um, to contribute their changes and their innovations back to that project. Right? It's just quite that simple. And for us, it's the next natural step, which is to leverage a commercial partnership and everything happening in industry and everything we do to create an overall better solution for everybody. Right? And our relationship is that we're an investor in Hortonworks, we're a partner, and we're a major adopter of this technology. We're, we, together with them, are going to co-develop the next generation of Hadoop, and then we're going to harden that technology by running it through all our processes that we developed over the years, all our research clusters, all these production systems, to really harden the software and turn it into an enterprise class, enterprise grade product. And if you think about the scale that Yahoo plays, and if you think about the diversity of uses, you can understand that we are already, let's call it enterprise plus plus in many ways, and we're going to apply that to the technology to really bring it to the next level. Right? And then we're going to roll this technology out across Yahoo to run our business. So that's the plan with Hortonworks. Now what Yahoo's going to do is we're going to, besides participating with Hortonworks, we're going to continue with our significant development efforts in Yahoo in this technology. And we will contri continue to contribute directly back to the open source community to work with the industry and to mature this technology. Because my belief is that um, if we, t if we look at what Yahoo's going to do, what Hortonworks will do, and what the rest of the community will do around Apache Hadoop, we all benefit, right? Yahoo benefits by having the best possible products and the most developers and the best minds in the world working on this technology that we could leverage to run our business, and the industry benefits by having just a powerhouse technology that I believe is truly going to transform the world. <laughs>